unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Today I want to speak about something very pertinent about the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Something very pertinent about the blessing of the Lord. And how to walk in the blessing of the Lord. Huh? How to walk in the blessing of the Lord. How to function in the blessing of the Lord. How to respond to the blessing of the Lord. Of course, you know, the Bible says, It's the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. So yes, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Rich not only financially, rich in every aspect of your life. Rich in your family, rich in your relationships, rich in your career, of course, financially. Rich in your ministry, uh, rich in knowledge, rich in understanding, rich in vision, rich in revelation, rich in strength, rich in every way. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is what the blessing of the Lord does. It maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's what the blessing of the Lord does. Now, we have a challenge today in the Christian circles. And here's the challenge. The challenge today in the Christian circles is... There's many people who live, walk, function under the blessing, but it is not shown or manifested in their lives. You're hearing what I'm saying? In the spirit, blessings are poured out. Okay? Pouring out a blessing, um, it's the essence of the cup. Right? For those of you who have read in scripture about the cup that blesses, uh, Paul has talked about the cup that blesses. Uh, it's in the spirit realm, every time God is giving a blessing to people, it appears to be sort of a pouring out of blessing. You remember when I was talking about your giving, your tithing and your offering? He says, And I shall pour out a blessing upon you that you shall not be able to what? To handle it. It's going to be so big. Praise God. Hallelujah. You understand? So, it's poured out. Blessings are poured out. They're poured out. So, God pours out a blessing on a congregation. Okay? On a people. The priest speaks. And as I'm speaking, there's an operation spiritually that is pouring out a blessing upon you. But then, one person goes out with this blessing and another one does not go out with that blessing. Yet the blessing was poured on the congregation. Are you following what I'm saying? It was poured on the congregation. It was proclaimed upon you. It was spoken upon you. But one man went empty and another one went full. In the same congregation. One man received it and another one did not. In the same congregation. And then the warped revelations of deception, of course, in the facets of our understanding. We say, you know, it wasn't for you today. That's what we say. This wasn't for you today. It wasn't yours today. If it was yours, it will come. You know, the Lord didn't intend it for you today. If it was yours, God would have brought it. I know it's not the will of God for you this time. But next time, God will come through. Keep coming. No, no. So then why are you seated in service? Why don't you come the day your blessing is ready? Are you, are you following what I'm saying? 
Every day is a day to receive the blessing of the Lord. When you know how to receive the blessing of the Lord. The words that we speak to you, the Bible says they are spirit and their life. Every time we talk to you, we are giving you life and we're releasing a spiritual thing. When it says you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, there is no way of accessing what is given to you except through the spirit. And the words that we speak to you, he says they are spirit and they are life. That is why I tell people, when you miss a someone, pay every price and get the someone. Look for it. Make sure that you're in time and in tune for the word. A couple of weeks ago, I was teaching about how to respond to seed. And I charged many of you that they seed time, the word, the time of the word. And I, I showed you by scripture how it is wrong for you to find the word. The word should find you. You should never reach. Of course, there are places which are unavoidable. The jam was there. So I'm not judging whoever is coming in. No, I, that is you to judge yourself. You understand? Because we don't know where people are coming from. Some people are coming many miles away. Some it was jam. Some they delayed to get them transport. Some probably woke up with a program in the morning and they had to finish it and probably they were not able to come on time. But if it is in your means, the priest should find you seated for the word. You should not come in and find the word. That is dishonoring the word. That is how you take God in your life. And you expect him to take you serious. No wonder you're struggling in certain areas of your life. Because that the word does not have priority. I gave you the scripture. I give you the scripture that says that the word should not be among the options. It should be the first option. The word has precedence over anything. That's one of the ways to access the blessing of the Lord. How you respond to his word defines how you, how you receive. If you're not late for a movie, huh? it begins at 8. You're there by 7.45. You understand what I'm saying? How are you late for the word? How do you even be late for the word of God? How? But am I making some sense? So I'll say that when the word of God comes to you, when you miss a service, what do you do? Do you live stream it? Do you get a sermon? Or you just let it pass? Maybe that one service you missed, the devil intended you to miss because your blessing was in that particular sermon. In anything, never miss a service. At most, do your level best to be there physically. But if it's at a point where you have failed to make it physically, at least always make the endeavor to follow up on the someone. Always do that. It's honorable before God. Put the word of God first place. Give God priority in everything you do. You'll be amazed what he will do in your life. Praise God. The Bible says, give yourself wholly to these things. And the Bible says that thy profiting may appear upon all. You understand? Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly. When I say give yourself wholly to the word, I mean when you say you're listening to the word, nothing should interrupt you. Nothing. Not even a child. Oh, so that child came to interrupt you. Not even a child should interrupt you. Nothing should interrupt you. Your phone should be off or in flight mode. If you're flying in a plane, they tell you phones in flight mode or switched off. On a plane, what about the heavenly God? The creator of heaven and earth. Anything should wait. Switch off your phone. If you're using it for a Bible, put it in flight mode. This is not the time to receive phone calls. You can receive them after and tomorrow. Anything can wait, but not the word. Somebody say amen. amen. So I'll say that you sit in a congregation and pronounce a blessing over people. And they receive it, or I receive it with their mouth. And then you walk out of that meeting, and some receive the blessing, and some don't. The same people sitting under the same meeting. And sometimes, you wonder, and then somebody says, you know, I think this is not the place for me. Why? Because I don't receive. No, darling. Okay, go to another place. Shift, go to another church, and tell me whether you'll receive. If what is coming from this altar is the word of God, you're also going to meet the word of God there. Unless you question my what? My knowledge in the mystery. 
But if you approve that I'm a minister of the word of God, wherever you will go, this word will haunt you. And it will require for you to produce the results that it, it requires you of. You understand? So it pains me every time I sit with people and you teach the same principles and one man gives you testimony upon testimony. You hear two opposite ends of two people sitting in the same meeting. Last week you preached this and immediately I voom. And then another one says, um, Apostle, I have sat, I've listened, I've confessed, I've spoken, I've, I've done everything. Fasted also. But I have not seen the word of God working. What's wrong with me? And that's why I'm answering you. You understand what I'm saying? I have been trying to open your eyes, many of you, to the reality of why you're not walking in what is proclaimed. And yet other people are walking in the same proclamation. It's many principles. It's many principles. Recently, let me say something a bit controversial, but very true. Apostle has been spoken to be so rough on women every time he's preaching about what about men what about men apostle you don't know these men Think, my goodness apostle you don't know these men i'm a man how how don't i know men how do you know them more than me who is a man but let me tell you something women of god the reason why i've preached more sermons on women than i have with men it is because you are helpers suitable it's like somebody one time was telling me oh you're so tough on me i stopped being tough on them and i stopped talking to them i stopped advising them because they don't understand the chastisement is love somebody don't understand that chastisement is love the bible says he chastises whom he loves okay so if why are you why are you scourging me why are you rough on me okay okay i'm sorry I'm so sorry for being rough on you. I will not comment anything. When you cross the road and the car is coming, I won't scold you. Let it hit you. I'll take you to the hospital, lay hands on you and heal you. Because that's what some people call love. No. Love has to rebuke. Yes, love will scold you sometimes. For who he loves, he what? He chastises. And the Bible says, and not chastisement is what? It's peaceable. Yes. Not chastisement is good. They don't just get uh, a vaseline and say, oh, baby. <laughs> no. Give me the message of that. Hebrews 12, 11. He says, and the time, discipline isn't much what? It always feels like it's going against the grain. Later, of course, it pays off handsomely, for it's the well-trained who find themselves mature in their relationship with God. It is the well-trained. But training will come rebuking. I will preach a sermon that is so hard for you. One time I sat down a church member, they were hurt by somebody, and I sat them down and I told them to forgive. Let go. And I told them, if you are seeking to revenge, I'm not on your side. And the person left the church. And they told other friends, oh, you know why I left? He was not on my side. Listen, I'm on God's side. I'm not on your side. If God tells you forgive, what do you do? Do you want me to get on your side to seek revenge? Do you know how many things we have let go of? Do you know how many people we have had to forgive? But I'm trying to mature you in your relationship with God. And it might be hard, but I'm rebuking you for the right reasons. Why sometimes we are hard on women? It's because, let me tell you, remember the Bible says you are found. You don't find men. If you're finding men, you're in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. He hasn't defined my price, but he has defined yours. Far beyond rubies. Now, if you know that there are more women in any day. The Bible says that four women shall hold on one man. Isn't it? Doesn't it say four? Four women shall hold on one what? Man and say, we shall look after ourselves. We shall feed ourselves. We shall put on clothes of our own. We shall get jobs. But please. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, the reason why it is so, it is because it is easier to find than to be found. It is easier to find than to be what? 
found. It is easier to find than to be found. He that findeth. That means every man in this world who is single is a seeker. They might not tell you, but they are what? Yes. Sometimes I hear women say, I'm seeing and searching. Women don't search. Women are searched. So when you introduce yourself, say, I'm single and being searched. But don't say, I'm single and searching. Men search. Women are sought after. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if a man is searching, are you hearing me? He has a mind and an understanding of what he is searching. He has a mind. Do you know, let me, let me tell you a mystery here. I don't know if a woman can listen to all these sermons. Virtuous woman, godly woman, strange woman. You understand? Hannah's cry one, two, three. You understand? Eh? Great praise. And fail to be found. You get my point? But somebody listens to all of these things. And there's still something inside them. Praise God. Who can find? They have a price to them. Listen, we're trying to help you. Don't get offended. We're trying to help you. Praise God. Now, these are principles that they have learned. Praise God. Now, I was talking about this blessing. There's many things, financial, physical, life, career, and everything. The blessing, it's available. But it's one thing for it to be given you. It's another for you to receive and walk in it. Do you know, like Genesis 27 tells us, Isaac had intended for Esau to walk in the blessing. It was deliberate for Esau to walk in the blessing. It was Isaac's deliberation. He told him, go, bring me some server of meat, cook that venison the way I want it, and I shall bless you. I will bless you. You know, the blessing is two, is double. Eh? The Bible says the things of God are double to him. I'll explain that doubleness. That duality uh, experience of everything is double double. Some people think double double is two times. No, double is not two times. Double shows the two dispensation of the blessing of God. Otherwise, then it would be triple forty. Some even say triple blessing conference, quadruple, whatever that means. Some of them don't even know what they're saying. It's they just saw double, then they say maybe let's triple it this time because we don't have an idea. But we go scripturally. It doesn't even exist. It doesn't even. It's not. It's even no bearing with spiritual content or biblical teaching. The duality of the distinctions of the blessing of God are the pouring out and the receiving. How much is poured out and how much is received? And I never want you to forget that. How much is poured out and how much is received? How much do you receive of what is poured out? And how much is poured out? If you do not know the extent, if you do not know how much is poured out, you might even err in how to receive or what to receive. You understand? Firstly, the understanding. Hmm? He says that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom and that they are double to that which is, that double to that which is, the degree of how much is given versus the degree of how much is what? Is received. That's, that's, that's a secret of wisdom. How much is given and how much is received. There is no such thing as the tripleness of a blessing. Those who call it triple are counting the blessing two, three, four times. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the duality of understanding the pendulum under which the blessing of God swings. It swings on how much is given versus how much is received. It's not just enough for you. There are people who have received way little than what was given. They tell the man, strike arrows. And he strikes them three times. And after that, that's when he realizes 
that this was an instruction spiritually. And God asks him, why did you strike the arrow three times only? You remember the prophet? Why did you only strike it three times only? Why didn't you strike it four, five, six times? That means every time of strike is a victory. You've only limited yourself to only three victories. Yet you could have had as many as you want because the instruction was strike the arrow. The instruction from God was strike the arrow. In the air. Twa, twa, twa. Praise the Lord. Thrice. Praise the Lord. He smote them thrice and stayed. And the next verse said, And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then thou hadst, had smite, thou hadst thou smite in Syria until thou hadst consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria, but only three times. Because the instruction from God was, Strike the ground with the arrows. The only issue was God didn't tell him the number of strikes will be the number of victories. But it should have taken the secret of this wisdom for the man to strike more. That's why the man of God was wrought within him. Because he limited himself on what God had given. So sometimes the duality, the doubleness of this thing, the secret of this wisdom, is that every time God says, I bless you with this, Always take time firstly to understand the magnitude, the meaning, the depth and height of this blessing. And two, receive it all. Receive it all. It's like when we talk about the spirit. Sometimes when we release the anointing, some of you take cups. Some of you take buckets. (laughs) Others take tankers. Others... They connect, and it's an ever-flowing river. But it's the same anointing. A couple of years ago, I had a vision of something like that. And I remember I was with four ministers in that vision, two of them. One of them is in Uganda. The other two, I never saw the face. But I remember in that, when God was pouring out something on Uganda, we were four men. I was with him here. The other two, I could not identify. And he poured out. He told us, drink and be filled. And I know what I took, I know what it took, and I know what the other guys took. And when that anointing fell on us, it started hitting the earth, or above the earth, I could see the stars, and the stars, was, the stars on the earth, some were brighter than others, and the brighter one, he told me, were ministers. And I saw some ministers walking away from the oil, and asked God, why don't they? Why don't they? Because some of them, do you know why some people can't receive from Fanero? They're older than me. Period. There is no way, by any chance, have something to add to me a 60-year-old. And their ministries are going to go that way. Because they forget Jesus did not save the world at 70. (laughs) The Lord will anoint who he wills. He will give mercy to whoever he wills. There are people I feel we could help, but they're too old to help. And I saw them walking away from the oil. And I saw little small lights that came into that oil, and they shined way brighter than these ones had ever shined. That's why you watch Uganda the next few years. Some names are going to die out literally. And you'll hear very strange names coming up in this land. And you will know that the Lord is serious about this nation. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just speak in tongues. Let's just pray. Come on, pray in the spirit. I desire Jesus. Oh, yes, who died for me upon the cross he took my sin by his blood he set free I desire Oh 
soul from you, my heart, and to you again. Telling you worthy of it all. There's an outpouring. Shira <laughs> Come on, 
Father, we thank you. Somebody give the Lord a man hang up a praise. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a mighty hand clap of praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, 
make manifest.